Even though the future is already here, many are still living in the past. All governments are striking examples of what's out of date and inappropriate to our proper business, our evolution. Though there are more of us, all of us live in the same place, the planet Earth. There is no difference between what happens to some of us and what happens to the others. Whatever happens, happens to all of us. Our problems are not various. They are identical. The purifying of water and air, the provision of nourishing food, the delivery of it to places where it is needed or just desired, the providing of shelter, the availability of energy, whether it is needed, wherever it is needed. We have these problems in common. We can solve them all best without thinking of the division of the world into 153 separate nations. Their separate powers mortally destructive. Our Buckminster Fuller called it killingly as opposed to livingly. Fuller is dead, but his spirit is now more than ever the spirit the world needs. It is alive. We have it in his work, his writings. Let us not forget we are now having to continue his work. In music, the absence of conductor, score, and bar line. Spaceship Earth, human needs and world resources, the two kept in balance, finding changing solutions for changing problems. The world game teenagers Fuller showed can play it. In other words, intelligence is needed instead of politics or lawyers or even the United Nations. So, what's future's future? First, the world's prime vital problem is how to reply, multiply by three, swiftly, safely, and satisfyingly, per pound, kilowatt, and man hour, the overall performance realizations of the world's comprehensive resources. This will render those resources able to support 100% of humanity's increasing populace at levels of physical living far above whatever has been known or imagined. To satisfy the physical will bring us also undreamed of metaphysical capabilities. Next, instead of ownership, individual 24-hour use of facilities, cars, cycles, paintings, hotels, telephones, museums, hospitals, libraries, restaurants, multiplying of value by time if house is locked, honoring its use, later when house is free, opening a door with one of those flat computer-made keys, its time validity changed. And then, stopping the removal of fossil fuels from the earth, developing solar energy, developing pneumatic power, effects of light, air, etc., reserving oil and gas for a time when their use is needed in connection with the initiation of a future technique. Third, along with the removal of nations, the removal of schools, Ivan Illich's de-schooling society, putting the process of learning in the hands of the person who is doing it, computer facilities and ways to contact others, old or young, who share your interests, studios for every kind of art or research, in a word, utopia. We have only to make it work for every last one of us. We begin by believing it can be done, getting rid of pessimism, blindly clinging to optimism, in no sense doubting the possibility of utopia, but simply wanting to know the details of how it will happen. How does it begin and where? It will not happen politically. 
Fuller says it will arise due to mankind's vast wealth, industrial wealth, the tool-organized capability to take energies of the universe, which are transforming their patternings in various ways, as yet uncontrolled by man, so that they go through channels onto the ends of circularly arranged levers, which man invents, so that the energy turns wheels and shafts to do all the work. Universal energy is inexhaustible. Our knowledge only increases, as does our common wealth. In order to bring about continuous elevation of human dignity, we will be able to afford to give everyone student fellowships in any subjects they elect, Fuller's education automation. Everyone's going to study whatever he pleases. Man's not needed because of his ability to work as a slave. He's needed because of his ability to consume. The Chinese now have the most consumers. They'll eventually produce at the lowest prices. With that competition, we're going to be forced to go into total automation, full unemployment, only to find ourselves amazingly successful, wealth automated. Industries now world around. Picture of man that's now visibly developing is world man. World citizenship will not occur as a political initiative. It will be required by the economics of an exploding industrial world required for its personnel. If everybody who teaches school because it's the simplest way of making a living were given a well-funded fellowship to a lifelong research, would they accept? Would they not stop asking, how can I make a living? And start asking, what is it that I love? that I'm interested in? What could I do to help make the world work to some more satisfactory, more interesting point? This used to be a stupid question. It suddenly becomes a very logical one. In 1927, Fuller gave up forever the general dictum of society, that is, that everyone to survive must make a living he substituted the individual's anti-entropic responsibility in universe. Fuller sought as an individual for the tasks needed to be done no one else was doing or attempting to do, which, if done, would physically and economically help society to eliminate pain. As a consequence, it was necessary for him to discipline his imaginings, invent and develop technical and scientific capabilities innovative problem solutions, synergetics. He found design strategy for universe, humanity, children, advantaging the new life, the new intelligence, doing more with less, ephemeralization. Fuller's revolution is his plan to change not man, but man's environment. Basque friend, Esther Ferrer replied by fax, I knew her as artist, anarchist. I had asked about anarchy's future. Anarchy will always have a future and a present, she wrote, because it's associated with creativity. I don't mean art, which is something else. I am, I talk of creativity in the sense that it comes from rejoicing, from pleasure, serving first of all the person who practices it, unconditioned by obligations to anyone else. There is no master except oneself. Anarchy, like creativity, is thus a completely gratuitous choice which engages only yourself and which you decide to practice. One could well define anarchy as a practice of liberty. One can practice it without others being at all interested. It does not take away from one's own joy, that is. Anarchistic thought is something out of time, even without time. I would even dare to say something anchored in human nature. There are other things anchored in human nature, unfortunately. And like creativity, 
individualistic and individualized. This is the source of its attractiveness and enormous risk. It is particularly attractive in periods as today of loss of spirit, loss of hope. There isn't or doesn't seem to be messianic hope to stuff our heads with. There is a return to essential things, never far away, because we can find them inside ourselves without needing recourse to ideologists or master thinkers, without needing to think outside ourselves, our liberties limited only by the consideration we give others as beings who also practice liberty. Anarchy is quite simply a problem of assuming individual responsibility. It is the idea that each person conceive of himself as an intelligent being capable of making his life decisions without delegating his decision-making capacities to someone else, whether a god, king, state, party, ingenious artist, master of thought, mother or father. Esther says, after all, anarchy really does have the future people are talking about. It is creative conduct as opposed to subordinate conduct. It is positive individualism to follow a way of thinking that proposes you can assume for your own acts responsibility, visibly responsible, first to yourself and then to society. After the unworkability of capitalism, Marxism, authoritarian socialism, anarchy seems for man's liberation to be a possibility once again. As Jorge Oriza said to me, from failure to failure, right up to the final victory. I think now of Marshall McLuhan. The world has become a single mind. We have extended the central nervous system, electronics, our technology makes the revolution for us. We can change our minds. We share only one, the planet. The planet has become a single person. It is a question of rolling off a log. Conduct, creative. Conduct from failure to failure. Anarchy, it promises nothing. Mind up to the final victory, creative mind, 